we can now develop a powerful theoretical tool known as the mean value theorem. First, a simplified version of this theorem known as Rolle's theorem. The French mathematician Michel Rolle, who lived from 1652 to 1719, was a brilliant algebraist and geometer who was awarded a lifetime pension for his accomplishments. When the calculus was invented, he criticized it as a collection of ingenious fallacies. However, he changed his mind later on and helped establish the calculus on a rigorous foundation by, pre by presenting this important theoretical tool which now carries his name. Rolle's theorem states the following. Suppose that f of x is continuous on a closed bounded interval and is differentiable on the open interval. Assume also that f takes on the same value at the two endpoints, f at a equals f at b. Then there must exist at least one point c in the open interval at which the derivative is zero. This theorem is intuitively obvious. Try to draw a smooth curve, that is a curve that always has a tangent line, between two points at equal height without seeing a flat tangent line anywhere. It was Rolle's contribution to give a simple rigorous proof of this result and to indicate it's important for proving less obvious results. The proof goes like this. If f is identically constant, then the derivative is zero identically and we're done. If f of x is not identically constant, then assume for definiteness that this function takes on a value less than the common value f at a equals f at b somewhere inside the closed bounded interval AB. Then f of x must attain a global minimum at at least one point in the interior of this interval. And at that point, the derivative must vanish. The last case is similar. Suppose f of x takes on a value greater than f of a equal f of b somewhere inside the interval. Then f must attain its global maximum somewhere inside the interval, and at such points, the derivative must be zero and that's the end of the proof. Here's an example to clarify the need for care in applying Rolle's theorem. In the first sketch, the derivative does not exist at one single point, and the assumptions of Rolle's theorem are therefore not satisfied, and the theorem cannot be applied. In the second sketch, even though the derivative does not exist at every point, the derivative does vanish at a point. In this case, Rolle's theorem just doesn't tell us anything because the assumptions are not satisfied, but sketching the function tells us we do have a flat tangent. Now we come to the real powerhouse result, the mean value theorem. Suppose that f of x is continuous on a closed bounded interval, AB, and is differentiable on the open interval, AB. Then there is at least one point c in the open interval for which f prime of c is equal to the difference quotient f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. This rather cryptic sounding theorem becomes very obvious when you draw a picture. What the theorem says is that there is a point c at which the tangent line is parallel to the chord line between the two points a f of a and b f of b. If we put the picture for the mean value theorem besides the picture for Rolle's theorem, it is clear that geometrically speaking, the mean value theorem is just Rolle's theorem rotated. And that is exactly how it is proved. To prove the mean value theorem, we define a new function h of x equal to f of x minus the difference quotient times x minus a. This algebraically performs the geometric rotation we need because h of a equals f of a and h of b equals f of a. It's a very simple calculation. So the new function h satisfies the assumptions of Rolle's theorem and we can assert that there must ex exist a point c in the open interval a b for which h prime of c is zero. And when you calculate h prime of c you conclude that f prime of c minus the difference quotient is zero, which is the same as saying that f prime of c is the slope of the chord line. 
Now let's look at an example to get a practical feeling for what this theorem is saying. Let f of x equals 2x cubed plus 7. This function is continuous and differentiable everywhere, so we can apply the mean value theorem on any interval. For example, consider the interval 1, 4. The mean value theorem states that there is a point c between 1 and 4, such that f prime of c is equal to f of 4 minus f of 1 divided by 4 minus 1. Now f prime of c is 6x squared, or 6c squared, and so that must be equal to 2 times 4 cubed plus 7 minus the quantity 2 times 1 cubed plus 7, all divided by 4 minus 1. So you do the arithmetic. The mean value theorem does not tell us how to find c, but in this case we can find c by solving this quadratic equation. c squared is 1 -sixth of 128 minus 2 over 3, which is 10.5. So c is roughly the square root of 10.5, which is about 3.24. If we change the interval, then in general c will move. For example, if we consider the same function on the interval minus 2 to plus 3, then the mean value theorem asserts that there is a number c such that f prime of c is f of 3 minus f of minus 2 over 3 minus minus 2. And that gives you a, a very different quadratic equation, which you can solve, and you get c equals plus or minus 1.527. Notice that we now have to allow for both negative and positive square roots since our new interval contains negative numbers. In fact, both values of c are valid. The slope at each of these points is equal to the slope of the chord line between minus 2f of minus 2 and 3f of 3. The main use of the mean value theorem is improving inequalities and theoretical results. For these applications, it is often useful to restate the conclusion of the mean value theorem as either f of b minus f at a is exactly equal to f prime at c times b minus a, or you can state it as f of b equals f at a plus f prime at c b minus a. In other words, multiply both sides of the original conclusion of the theorem by b minus a for the first statement, and then add f of a to both sides for the second. For example, here's a theorem. Assume that f of x is differentiable on the open interval pq, and that f prime is greater than zero on all of this interval. Then f of x is strictly increasing on the entire open interval pq. Stated more concisely in mathematical notation, if f prime of x is positive for all x in pq, then a less than b implies f of a less than f of b for any points p less than a less than b less than q. The mean value theorem reduces the proof of this result to one line. Once we recognize that the existence of the derivative at every point of a, b implies f is continuous on this interval. Given a and b contained in the open interval p, q, there exists a point c between them such that f of b minus f at a equals f prime at c times b minus a, which is a positive number by assumption. This is the result of the mean value theorem. Of course, we can prove the symmetric result for the case when f prime of x is less than zero on an interval p, q. In that case, you get f of b minus f of a is f prime at c times b minus a, but now b minus a is positive, f prime at c is negative, the product is negative, so f of b minus f of a is negative, so f is strictly decreasing. Finally, we can prove that if f prime at x is identically zero on an open interval p, q, then f is constant on this interval. Because in that case, f of b minus f of a, by the mean value theorem, is exactly equal to f prime at c times b minus a for some point c between a and b. But f prime at c is zero no matter what c is. And therefore, that product is zero and therefore f of b minus f of a is zero, and f is constant. The mean value theorem can also be used to prove important inequalities. For example, for any number, numbers a less than b, there is a point c between them such that the cosine of b minus the cosine of a 
is equal to its derivative at c times b minus a. So that's the product minus the sine of some number c times b minus a. This in turn implies that the absolute value of cos b minus cos a is equal to exactly the absolute value of the product minus sine c times b minus a. And that's never any bigger than the number b minus a because the sine of c is never bigger than 1 in absolute value. So in fact, we come up with an inequality that the cosine of b minus the cosine of a is never bigger than b minus a. In fact, one can use this type of argument to estimate the change in any function if we can estimate the size of its derivative on an interval. Consider the function log x on the interval from e cubed to 21. We want to know 3 equal log e cubed is a reasonable estimate for log of 21. For simplicity, we will just try to get an upper bound on how big log 21 can be. By the mean value theorem, there is a point c between e cubed and 21 such that the log of 21 is exactly equal to the log of e cubed plus the derivative of the log function times 21 minus e cubed. The derivative of the log function is 1 over c. Now, e is less than 2.7, so we can estimate 21 minus e cubed is less than 21 minus 2.7 cubed is less than 21 minus 19.683, which is about 1.317. The number 1 over c is decreasing as c moves across the interval between e cubed and 21. So its largest value is at, at the left end point of this interval, at e cubed. And we can estimate 1 over c is less than e cubed, which is less than 1 over 2.7 cubed, putting in the smaller number 2.7 in, in the denominator. And that's the reciprocal of 1 over, sorry, that's the reciprocal of 19.683. And that's less than 0 0.0509. So finally, we can conclude the log of 21 is exactly equal to the log of e cubed plus 1 over c times the, the difference 21 minus e cubed. And that's less than 3, the log of e cubed, plus, well, we put in the upper bound on 1 over c. That's 0 0.0509. And we multiply that by the upper bound on 21 minus e cubed, 1.317. And we get the number 3.067, etc. So we now have an upper bound on how big the log of 21 can be, complements of the mean value theorem. One of the most important inequalities we have used in past lectures is Bernoulli's inequality. 1 plus b to the power r is bigger than 1 plus rb, as long as b is positive and r is greater than or equal to 1. We prove this for r a natural number, but in fact it holds for any real number r greater than or equal to 1. And in fact, we can also allow b to be any number bigger than minus 1. But for simplicity of exposition, I'm only going to deal with b greater than or equal to 0 and r strictly bigger than 1. To prove Bernoulli's inequality, we consider the differentiable, hence continuous, function f of x equals 1 plus x all raised to the power r. And we'll look at this function on the interval, uh, the clo half closed interval, 0 infinity. We can apply the mean value theorem on any interval, 0b with b positive, to assert that there exists a number c between 0 and b, such that f of b minus f of 0 is the derivative somewhere between b and 0 times b minus 0. And for this particular function, that means that 1 plus b raised to the power r minus f of 0, which is just 1, is exactly equal to r times the quantity 1 plus c to the r minus 1 power times b minus 0, where c is again some number between 0 and b. Now some common sense r minus 1 is positive, and so is c. So 1 plus c raised to the r minus 1 power, even if that's a root, will be bigger than 1. And that in turn implies that 1 plus b to the r minus 1, which is exactly equal to r times 1 plus c to the r minus 1 times b, 
is strictly bigger than RB. Now just add one to both sides and you've got Bernoulli's inequality. Our final application of the mean value theorem is to prove one of the cases of L'Hopital's rules. We could replace f and g by their derivatives in the limit of their ratio, limit as x goes to a of f of x over g of x, if both lim f of x and lim g of x at a are zero, or both of those limits were plus or minus infinity. For the case when both f and g have limit zero, we can prove the validity of L'Hopital's rule by using an extension of the mean value theorem. The idea is to replace the ratio f over g by the difference ratio setting g of a equal f at a equals zero, f of x over g of x becomes f at x minus f at a over g at x minus g at a. Now by the mean value theorem, there's a point c between a and x such that f at x minus f at a is f prime at c times x minus a. And by the same token, there's a point d between a and x that does the same thing for the function g. g at x minus g at a is g prime at d times x minus a. So we can write the ratio f at x minus f at a over g at x minus g at a as f prime at c over g prime at d because the x minus a's cancel. Well, the good news is we've replaced the ratio of f to g by a ratio of their derivatives. The bad news is that the derivatives are, as far as we can assert, being evaluated at two different points. What we need is a mean value theorem that says that we can use the same point, that is, the ratio f of b minus f at a over g of b minus g at a can be replaced exactly by the ratio f prime at c over g prime at c for some c. To me, it's a miracle that this theorem holds for reasonable assumptions on f and g, and it is called the extended or generalized mean value theorem, or sometimes Cauchy's mean value theorem, since he's the fellow who proved it. It states, if f and g are continuous on a closed interval a, b, and differentiable on the open interval, then there's a point c in the open interval, such that the, the quotient of differences, f of b minus f at a over g at b minus g at a, is exactly equal to f prime over g prime, both evaluated at c. The proof is approximately two lines. Form the special function h of x equal to f of b minus f at a times g minus g at b minus g at a times f. Note that h of a and h of b are equal, and so we can apply Rolle's theorem. There is a point c between a and b at which h prime of c is zero. When you write that out, you get exactly the result of the generalized mean value theorem. f of b minus f at a over g at b minus g at a is f prime over g prime at c. So, to recap, we discussed at some length precise definitions of local and global extrema and proved that for a smooth function, the derivative will vanish at an interior local max or min. This gave us Rolle's theorem, which asserts that a smooth function that takes the same value at two points must have a flat tangent somewhere between. Rolle's theorem, in turn, gave us the mean value theorem, which is a powerful tool for pro providing rigorous proofs of intuitively obvious results, and also gives us all kinds of important inequalities and estimates. Finally, we proved the generalized mean value theorem, which immediately provides a proof of one case of L'Hopital's